Hey guys, Josiah here from thinkorswim.net. Um, just want to do a quick video on the Option Hacker tab in Thinkorswim. Um, there's not much information out there on the internet that I've uh, I've noticed, and so I thought I'd go ahead. I, I've been experimenting around with it lately, and I thought I'd go ahead and do a quick tutorial just to help out some people that um, are probably baffled by it in some ways. Uh, like I was at first and um, so let's get started here so I'm in the scan tab in thinkorswim and I've clicked the option hacker sub tab here and so now I've I've got a blank scan set up here there's no filters at all and I'm scanning in um, a category of all optionable stocks or all issues that are optionable so that narrows down the universe just a little bit for us in advance. Now what you'll notice here is they have um, where you can intersect that with other lists, say um, say you only want optionable from NYSE, so you could intersect it with that or you know and you can also create your own lists of stocks and import those. Um, and so you could intersect, um, you could search the universe of all optionable stocks within a specific watch list that you import. Um, that you know maybe all the stocks that you like to watch or something like that, uh, a, a custom list that you've made, or any of these lists that um, that Thinkorswim provides or any of your custom scans. But anyway, I'm going to leave that on all optionable. And so you'll notice down here we have we can add these different types of filters. And this is the con confusing thing in Option Hacker. Uh, you need to start by narrowing down the stock, the underlying stock um, uh, criteria, uh, to narrow down the universe of options that that will be returned. So um, we can set this to: um, I want the last price of the underlying stock to be at least ten dollars and no more than two hundred dollars. So it will only return options for stocks that fall between these prices. Um, then let's say we want today's volume to be at least 100,000 shares, we'll say. And maybe we can add a stock study filter. Now don't get confused by this. The study filters, even though we're under Option Hacker, these only apply to the underlying stock. And so a lot of people try to, to use these to uh, these studies to scan criteria against an option uh, universe and, and they get results that they don't understand. Uh, and that's because these only scan against, um, these only filter the stocks themselves, not the options. So we're in studies here and I'm gonna go to volume and I'm gonna say average volume for this stock over the last 20 periods um, I want to be greater than 500,000 per day. And you can see here it's the aggregation period is set today, but you could just as easily say I want it to be 500,000 every 30 minutes or something, or every week or whatever you want. Um, but So I want the average daily volume for this stock, the underlying stock, to be at least 500,000. Okay, so now I've kind of narrowed down the list. Um, and I haven't added any option criteria yet, and so it's not gonna give me any results. I have, uh, down here, you'll notice that I have selected return 200 options. You can tell it to return stocks, options, or stocks and options. I'm gonna leave that on options. But it won't return anything because I have no filter set up for option yet. Um, so I'm gonna add an options filter here. So we've added a stock filter, we've added a stock study filter. Um, and now I'm going to add an option filter and we'll just say, um, let's see, well first of all, uh, let's narrow this down a bit by just saying I want only calls. Uh, I don't want, don't want this filter to return any puts. So that'll narrow down, the, cut the list in half or so. Um, and let's see, uh, we want, we could say delta, we want delta to be um, somewhere between 
negative 0.45 and positive 0.45. Uh, just try to find some that are closer to in the money there. So let's see what this does for us now. We've added some options filters, so it should give us some results now. Now, okay, so we've got some results here. It says showing 200, which I set here. The, I wanted it to return 200, the first 200 options. And it's showing 200 options of 107,000 that are actually the results of this search. So there, I mean, there's literally a ton of results for this. So I, I usually keep adding filters here to try to narrow this down quite a bit and, um, and get a more manageable uh, number of results. Um, so we can actually load this up in charts. Uh, I've, by clicking this button here, I've added this column here. By clicking this button, it will add it to my red chart. I've selected red here and you'll see that it's loaded that option symbol up here in, in the uh, result uh, or in the, uh, the chart symbol. So this is actually the option. This is not the stock. I'm looking at the actual option trading activity here. Um, so then you could go ahead and, and place your orders based on this chart and, and trade the option that way. Um, now, once you have all the filters set up that you want, um, and by the way, I also have this custom spread column here um, that I've sorted in ascending order. So I have the lowest spread results showing up at the top up here. And so that can be useful for, um, you know, locating options that don't, are not ex incredibly spready and uh, that you're not going to lose your shirt on just from the spread or whatever. So. Um, after you have all the settings set up that how you want them, and you've narrowed your list down, um, you know maybe you want some, uh, you know maybe you want the um, open interest, you know minimum open interest on the stock. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's just put in a number here, and um, so that will shorten down the list quite a bit. And then once you you've got everything set up how you want. You go up here to this menu and you click Save Scan Query. Give it a name, blah, blah, blah. And then whenever you want to come back here, if you, you know, you've, you've changed all this, you've loaded something else, whatever you've done, um, when you're ready to actually um, do some more scanning, uh, now I'll have to remember what I actually named that. Uh, I think it started with an S if I remember right. Uh, yeah, so here we go. So it, uh, loading that up under load scan query, personal, and whatever you saved it as under this alphabetical list here. Um, and so I saved it as this random string of characters. And that will load it up in here and allow you to just instantly go ahead and scan. You can also select um, anything here that you want it to automatically sort it by and whether you want it to sort it ascending or descending. So there you go. I hope that gives you a little bit of an introduction to um, Option Hacker since there's, there's not much information available out there, even from Thinkorswim uh, themselves. Um, the main things you need to remember is, like I said, this, uh, you need to narrow down the list by the actual underlying stock. You're scanning against the stocks first. So you add these stock filters with this button. Then you add any study filters you want, like, um, you know, price change, maybe you want to scan for options on stocks that have gapped today, you know, that have an opening gap today. And so you could go into the study here and say price performance, uh, I want it to be a gap up stock or a gap down stock, so forth. Uh, you could add any stock study filters here, and that's again separate from an option filter. These are scanning against the underlying stocks. Then after you do that, you can go in and scan the actual options, filter for actual option criteria. And you know you can choose whatever is available in this list here to actually scan for specific uh, types of options. So I hope that helps. Like I said, um, check us out on thinkorswim.net and um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.